calcium is one of the most important nutrients for your plants and for your soil. Today we're going to talk not just about the parts per million test for calcium you can find on a normal soil test, but we want to talk about base saturation calcium and what you should look for on your soil test and in your soils. When we look at soil tests and we look at parts per million, calcium is going to be the biggest number on the whole test. So well, you we say, hope it is. <laughs> well, you see 2,000 parts per million, 4,000 parts per million, 8,000 parts per million. What does that really mean? Well, it's the biggest number on your test. So does it matter if it's 2,000 or 8,000? Certainly it does. And there's a lot of different things that you can look at. But the most important one, as Brian has alluded to here, is the base saturation test, where it tells us as a percentage basis, where are we at with calcium? All right, so your plant does need calcium. And you can look right on like the Ag PhD fertilizer removal app, for example, and see for any crop how much calcium it's going to remove from the soil. So that part's important. Chances are, though, you've got enough calcium to meet that need. But what you may not have enough calcium for is to have overall good soil health. Here's the thing you got to understand. Calcium is a very big molecule. And if you put a whole bunch of calcium in the soil, you have your level relatively high. You have all these big molecules there. That means air can go down a little bit deeper in the soil. So calcium is key for soil porosity. It's key for air moving down in the soil. That means that it's key for root growth, and it's key for soil microbial life. So having good oxygen levels or good air levels in the soil, super huge, and in order to do that, you gotta have a high calcium level. So you may be asking, what is the right calcium percentage or calcium level to have in your soil? We'd like to see at least 65% on that base saturation test. Preferably, we'd get up to 70 or even 75% in a lot of cases, but it depends on what else is going on in your soils. But if you're in that 65 to 75% range, you're generally in a good spot. Now that calcium is super important, as Brian mentioned, for soil health, also for getting nutrients into plants. If you've got good levels of calcium, that's opening the door into the plant to get every other nutrient in there. So it's really important for you to have calcium on that soil. So the reason today why we wanted to talk a little about this base saturation test and 65 to 75% calcium is just this. Very commonly, base saturation is left off the soil test. And so you may be left wondering, well, do I have the right balance of calcium in my soil? You probably have enough parts per million, like I said, but is it enough in ratio to the other nutrients like magnesium, sodium, potassium, and so on? That's where base saturation comes in. The whole point is this, as a farmer, as an agronomist, I want simple. I want to just look at a number and I go, okay, I know I need to make a change. Rather than trying to run the math in my head, if I don't have base saturation, I gotta look at all these parts per million and say, well, does it look like I have enough calcium or not? With base saturation, very simple, 65 to 75%. So you may be thinking about this calcium percentage and all right, what if I'm really short? What do I do? You know, in a lot of cases, if we're short on calcium, one of the things that could be high is hydrogen. And in that case, what that's indicating is we've got a low soil pH. Well, what's the way to fix a low soil pH? You add lime, which is calcium carbonate. So we get that calcium percentage up, we get our balance in our soil right again, and our pH comes back to normal. Now, another thing you may have is you may have a lot of magnesium in the base saturation and now you've got a low calcium percentage. Again, what do we need to do? We need to get that calcium level up and you're gonna see some changes in your soil and you're actually gonna see soil pHs coming down as you build that calcium percentage up. Now I mentioned lime as being a potential calcium source. Another one that's very commonly used would be gypsum, which would be calcium sulfate. There are many different calcium sources out there. You'll just have to look at what's available in your area, but certainly the two most common ones are lime that often gets used when we have a below 60% base saturation calcium, or if we have a very low soil pH, and then gypsum, calcium sulfate, when we need some sulfur in addition to the calcium, or if we just have that local source available that's very inexpensive. Now, if let's say to Darren's point, your lime source is super cheap, it's right there, and you go, man, I don't wanna spend all the money on gypsum because I don't have a local source, I wanna do lime, yet my pH is high. You can do that. 
but you're probably going to want to supplement that with elemental sulfur because the lime is going to drive the pH up, the elemental sulfur can drive the pH down. But anyway, again, there are lots of different sources for calcium. We would just encourage you, if your parts per million are low, and especially if your base saturation calcium is below 65%, you need more calcium, it's time to get some applied. One other thing you may be considering applying is weed control for our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed?